important to many people in the keto space is addiction and coming off of different addictions. And it was one topic I wanted to touch on with you today. And I've, I've heard for people, one of the things I hear the most from people is how difficult it is to quit sugar. And having done it, I know how hard it is, whether it's sugar or sweeteners, you know, or just, you know, going off of processed foods and carbs. And I've heard that, uh, I guess it was uh, Scott from Carnivore Cast, he recommended tyrosine as a really good supplement to take when you're dealing with going off of like sugar or coffee or something like that. Do you have any supplements that you know can support someone who's, you know, trying to quit something that they're, they've been addicted to or is trying to make a change in their habits? That's a. Uh, I totally agree with that one. Tyrosine is a precursor to dopamine and serotonin, and um, you know can help. I like. There's a form called N-acetyltyrosine. That's my favorite. It's kind of an optimized version. I always look for like the most effective, most bioavailable version. It's a little bit more expensive, but yeah, I am a big fan of tyrosine. Taurine. I think is really cheap. It not only helps like with brain function, um, but, and like you see it in like Red Bull and some of these energy drinks, but I like taking about five grams, which is a pretty healthy dose. It also helps with hydration. So I'm a big fan of that. There are some compounds that are going to help like more along that, that serotonin uh, pathway, but um, there's uh, saffron. Saffron is really, really good for uh, like appetite, um, but also addiction and kind of like compulsive behavior. So they're seeing that saffron is is very effective on that front. But I think those are some those are some good ones. I mean, a lot of this can be a result of of low serotonin levels. So that's something to look at. Like you're seeking. Um, that kind of high and same with low dope high and low like repetition of dopamine so you have to be careful there and that's where like doing exercise and like positive non-risk taking behaviors can be good in your life for dopamine but another one that happens a lot is low blood sugar so you know being careful there and you know being on maybe a low carbohydrate diet or if you're on high carbs then doing like low glycemic carbohydrates, high fiber carbohydrates, um, things like that um, could be ideal. And then taking something like berberine could be very helpful. Uh, also getting your sleep. Um, sleep makes you acutely insulin resistant. And that's one of the reasons like we make impulsive behaviors like following bad sleep is because we're seeking like the energy that we're short on. So like you know, so we'll go get like the, you know, coffee with the sugar, we'll get the monster drink, we'll get the donuts, we'll get the candy out of the vending machine, because we're just our brain, our neurons are functioning, functioning more slowly. Uh, they're not firing as well, and we're insulin resistant. And so we just like need the energy and the body's like, go find this quick energy. And so we do caffeine, we do sugar, like, so avoiding those traps by getting quality sleep is important. What, can you clarify what you were saying about dopamine right before you said that's why exercise is important? Yeah, that uh, dopamine, you can fall into a, a dopamine trap where it's, it's very like up and down. It's a reward center, right? Like, and that's where we get into like the Facebook, Instagram, like checking your likes and scrolling and you know, we get into a lot of these uh, addictions, like someone can get into internet porn, some of these things like that, like you get a dopamine hit, but then it goes down and then you need another dopamine hit. So it's important that we find ways that are less re uh, reckless and like counterproductive to our long term health that are less impulsive, that are ways to level out dopamine like on a longer term basis that are healthy for you. Like, so taking walks, you know, doing healthy exercise, 
like pursuing um, hobbies that are, you know, fun to you. Like if you like singing or acting or, you know, like going to a friend, you know, with a friend to movies and, and laughing, you know, like those kinds of things are healthy behaviors that, that you're not like in this chronic uh, reward center cycle that can be very unhealthy. Yeah, I read that there are levels of dopamine where those activities will release somewhere between 100 to 200 units of dopamine, and that is like a healthy amount. But if you go above that, say like cocaine and sugar, the response is like 400 units. And so it creates such a high that it then makes it habit forming. Whereas like if it's a healthy thing, like you're saying, like a cup of having sex, they're going to have like somewhere around 200 units. But then if they're watching internet pornography, it's more like 400. And then it creates this like really addictive cycle. So I think that's a great tip of just doing activities and doing things that give you these healthy amounts of dopamine. It's not like dopamine is all bad. Right. But it's a reward center and you want to be just engaging in healthier like levels of it where it's not like they're healthy healthy dopamine hits versus like these really hyper addictive rushes that we were just not designed to experience. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I know one thing that's really helpful and we kind of talked about it before too, was just emphasizing more connection in your life Mm. and focusing more on connection, mindfulness activities, like these kinds of things can really support that especially when someone is trying to quit sugar or quit something i also recently read this book called or the small book of big change by this dr amy i can't think of her last name right now but she was saying how sometimes when people have a habit that they can't break they hear this voice in their head that says like say it's like chocolate after dinner they're like okay i gotta have my chocolate now I must have it. I have to have it. But you hear it in your own voice. And so it becomes that much more compelling. But if you just stop and question it and go like, well, what if I don't? And like, you kind of just observe that voice and how it comes up. And that that's, I guess it's a mindfulness practice. But yeah, I found that really interesting with addiction and just how eating well, eating more nutrient dense food, helps a lot with that because you are getting better dopamine and all these neurotransmitters from the diet too, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And what you're talking about, like that that inner voice is so important that we exercise a positive voice, that we do daily affirmations, that we do visualizations. And we talk about, like you saying, like, what if I don't do that? But like, what if I want to be in this state you know, tomorrow when I want to be happy with, um, you know, my food choices and what if I want this and what if I become that? Like there's so many things that you're, you need to be saying to yourself positively uh, because typically we've talked about this, that if anyone talked to you, like you talked to you, you wouldn't be their friend. Yeah. So you have to be careful with that, that inner voice and start being like, the your your greatest advocate instead of your greatest enemy like yeah. you know saying saying to yourself like you are amazing you are beautiful you don't need that you're incredible have you looked at yourself lately have you thought about all your accomplishments lately like it's pretty amazing so and certainly the five people like we've talked about too like that you surround yourself with critical and you need to have quality relationships. And I believe that's the most important factor of the blue zones. Like you can look at the blue zones and people are living a long time eating high carb, low carb, in between carb, like Mediterranean. Um, The things that they're definitely doing are eating whole foods, they're exercising. But the most important thing is that they have quality relationships. They slow down they connect with each other. They have three hour meals where they talk with each other and have real friendship and really connect and really open up and they can 
they feel like they can depend on these people. Um, and that, you know, can't be underestimated.